So your program needs to handle data. Let's assume that we have data. Data could be uh, uh, the numeric data, numerical data, or uh, maybe uh, some alphabet, uh, al al alphabetical data. Uh, we call that string in, uh, in, in coding. Okay, string is a sequence of characters. So now you can say string, okay? A sequence of uh, characters. J O H N, there's a sequence of characters. So, so let's say this is a string. Uh, I want to deal with this string. This is the data. But not only one time, I want to I want to load that uh, John in my memory. So uh, at some other points in the uh, immediately, but uh, later, I am going to uh, use it multiple times. So so I loaded uh, my memory, but in order to uh, revisit and reuse it, then I need to know where it is, right? The, we don't need to know the address where John is located on my memory, but at least logically, we need to know, uh, we need to have some, uh, uh, some label, okay, some container. So when I say name, then when I say name, that this name, by the way, this is a variable, this is value. Uh, this variable knows what it contains. This is a variable. So I said here, variable is nothing but placeholder. So this is a variable and this is a value. Basically, we, uh, we work on uh, values. In this case, one value, but could be multiple values possible, right? If I handle this value immediately, then I don't need this. I can just cook whatever I want. But when I, I declare this value, and I may be able to use it uh, more than one time, or even if that is one time, but I'm going to use this later. But I, I already know this so that I load this value in my memory. When I revisit later to this value, then I need, I need somehow how to get to that value. So a way of doing that is uh, labeling. I hold this value. So we name it. So this is a variable. This is a value. This is a value. This is a variable. In coding, in order to do this, this is a statement. Variable equal value. Right hand side, in between there's an equal sign. We call this equal sign assignment. Uh, as pictorially, uh, you have a value and you need a label. Somehow this is a label. Um, so this label, once you know this label, then you know this value. Uh, John is, um, is a value, a right-hand side. And then there's equal sign. Equal sign is assignment. This assignment is in this direction, from left to, from right to left. So left, that is a value, a I mean, variable. So next time when you do, hey, I want to know a name, then it'll be, by the way, this is, uh, this is something that I need to uh, explain. Um, so uh, the Python engine, Python, when Python interprets uh, this language here, name equals uh, John, then, uh, it scan uh, this uh, the statements name and equal sign. Then immediately at this point, uh, your uh, Python understands. Hey, there is uh, some assignments, and then uh, there is another things. This is a value. If if it is a, a double quote, then then we call that string. 
as I said, the string is a sequence of characters. So this is a string, John. So your Python understands a name holds value or string, John. Okay. So name is nothing but John. When this variable is evaluated, then, then the value that we can obtain from that evaluation is John in this case. And next statement here, print. When your Python scan through this print, and when it comes to this uh, open parenthesis and close parenthesis here, then it understand, hey, print is a function, built-in function. Last week we learned print is a built-in function. So it is given uh, from, given by uh, Python, right? So this is a known uh, statement. Print is known by uh, Python. Python knows how to handle print. More specifically, Python understand how it uh, identifies something inside the parameter here. So when it comes to print and open and close parentheses, then look at uh, inside. So we have NAME. NAME then, NAME is not, if it is a string, then this guy doesn't care. Remember your first homework assignments, I ask you to write your name. Then uh, when you write your name, then you put the double quotes, right? When it comes to double quotes, whatever inside that double quotes, then that's a string. If it is a string, and if you want to apply that to print statements, then it copy that string as is onto your output device. What is the output device from your computer? Typical output device is? Terminal. Terminal, right? Screen. So it display that. But in this case, it is not string. It is a name, name, N-A-M-E. If it is not a string, if it is not a string, if it is not a numerical value, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 2.5, or 1,785.123. They're all numbers, right? Unless it is a string, unless it is numerical value, there's some literal, then this literal needs to be evaluated. This literal needs to be known by Python. So Python already scanned the first language here. In the first language, it says a name is nothing but variable, which holds string John. So when it comes to this name, then Python understands, hey, I know this name because I already scanned it. So in this case, the evaluation of this variable is nothing but John. So print name in this case, then it prints what? It prints John. So you can see John here. This is the outcome in this case. Right? What if we have a multiple uh, uh, values like this? Um, uh, 30, 20, 600, all different. 30, that is a length. Uh, uh, 20, that is a width. Uh, 600, that is areas. Then, uh, then you can say here, uh, length equals 30, uh, width is equals uh, two, 20. And then you multiply by the length, the length times width, uh, then there is the area, right? Uh, this right hand side, if you see this, as I said, this equal sign is on assignment. So right hand side, whatever the value here should be assigned to left hand side area. So area is another variable like width and length. 
So we already uh, defined the two variables, length and width. Uh, they hold some values. And in this statement says, in the right-hand side, there's some expression, multiplication, okay? Length times width. Length, Python already understand this length because we already defined the length. Length is nothing but nothing but three, I mean 30. And width is nothing but 20. So this guy says, oh, apply this operator. So multiplication, then whatever outcome of this of, uh, the computation, that will be assigned to area. Okay, this is hard coded. This is something generated. Here's some example, right? Um, yeah. So this is a generated, and then third variables can hold that value. So in the memory, 30 can be held by or labeled by length. 20 is a label, labeled by another variable with 600 is labeled by area. Those are all the variables. And then finally, if we say print area, then uh, this 600 will be returned. But internally, those all each individual values can be revisited because uh, we defined it that way. And we know the uh, labels, uh, length, width, and areas. Uh, that is the data types. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll get to that part a little later. All right, the other one that I want to do, oh, now, now we want to uh, practice, okay? So you now see Pizer, right? Uh, William, do you have any uh, question uh, here? So far, so good? No, I see everything. I'm following along. Okay. Uh, now, okay. Um, here's something that I want to do. Um, now, so look at the print statements. Okay. Um, and as I said, this pound sign, uh, is, is the indicator whatever the what the rest of this that line starting with the pound sign then it is not evaluated by uh, this python this is only the comment this is only for human uh, uh, readings computer does not read that and then uh, we put here print um, let's say three plus four uh, equals to seven. Okay. And then uh, this is a new, if you want to save this, then uh, for Windows, you can do Control S for uh, Mac users, Command S, then it'll, excuse somewhere. Uh, Okay, and I will do here, for example, homework two. And I execute it by holding down command button and hit uh, enter or holding down control button for Windows users and hit enter or return. Then I have this. Uh, why I have this? Because uh, they're all String as is, although although I use uh, some uh, numbers, uh, but I have here symbols uh, plus sign and equal sign, uh, all together uh, encompassed uh, with the double quotes. So this is a nothing but st string, right? String. But if you want to do somehow uh, a equals three and b equals uh, four. Uh, therefore, uh, we now know uh, a is a variable, 
um, which hold the value three, B is a variable holding uh, value four. So I want to compute uh, that. So for example, if I want to do uh, A comma B comma A plus B, print statements can take, uh, this is a function, it may take uh, zero or more parameters. Okay, and delimiter uh, comma here. So three parameters. Print A, then it will print what this A variable contains. So number three, and then next one, number four. Next one, A plus B. So it is like A plus B, then uh, number three uh, plus number four. Then we'll have seven, right? Just like this, this will be computed. If we do this, A plus B in this context is nothing but simply three plus four, so it's a seven, right? So I wanna save this and uh, execute it. Then I have A, three and four and seven, right? This is a hard coded. This is, if you see here, this is print statements. There's no hard-coded uh, number like this, three, four, or seven, all the variables. So some evaluations involved in this uh, statements. Yeah. How can we, at this point, Right now, there's a no plus sign, no equal sign, right? Can you make like this, this? So I wanna copy this. Once more try here. Can anyone say, how can we do it? I hope others also understand that. Uh, this print statements can take uh, zero or more parameters. This is a parameter, first parameters. Uh, uh, the variable A, so it, uh, when we say print A, then A is a variable. This is not, this variable needs to be evaluated before it is printed uh, because A is not just a string. So when A is evaluated, uh, then it can find out it holds number three. Therefore it uh, print three here. That's what I am trying to to here. And the next one is B. If I ask you to put the plus sign in between, then we need to put here plus sign. But if we simply plus sign like this, then we will have an error because this plus sign is not evaluated. If you want to evaluate plus sign as an operator, someone may say, oh, plus sign is an operator. Yeah, that is an operator. That is an adder, right? Addition, additive uh, operator. If it is an additive operator, then you need to have, a, see here we have a, a, a binary operator or unary operator. What binary operator means is that if you have a plus sign, then you need to have two values uh, before and after, right? three plus four. So three is operand for another operand. So two operands needed for that operator. Two operands needed. Therefore that operator is called a binary operator. Plus sign is a binary operator. If we have a binary operator, then we need to have it like this, A plus B, right? This plus sign works because we have binary A and B. 
two operands. But this case, there's no such things. Number one, right? Number two, we do not operate, we do not evaluate that plus sign, but we want to copy it. We want to display it as is. If we want to display it as is means, then, then we need to tell the Python, don't evaluate it. Don't evaluate it means, if you want to say, do not evaluate, then you need to say, quote. So you, you can say here, quote. If we have a double quotes, then, then you need to have a double quotes pairwise. If we have a single quotes, then that, that is fine also. Uh, single quote equals single quote. And then comma. You should put here comma. If you don't have this comma, then, then you will have an error also. Because this is parameter to be evaluated, comma. This is our second parameter, string. So no evaluation. This is a third parameter, variable. So evaluate it. This is a fourth parameter, quote. Pairwise, a single quote, fine. So that is simply copy it as is. Next parameter, we have variable, operator, variable. Okay, evaluate it. Okay, then we will execute it. Very good. Any more motivation to do, to improve? This is what we want. In mathematics, nothing wrong with this. But can we make this to be like this? Right, the format in, um, yeah, in uh, the slide, if you see the slide, then uh, there is a uh, input that is one of the uh, built-in functions. And after that, uh, and then print functions, um, and then formats, all right? So, uh, So there are two kinds of formats, format as a built-in function and format is as a method that is associated with a string. Okay. Format as a built-in function, then it is, uh, it is, it can be used like a print. Okay. Uh, that may be used to uh, format as well, but anyway, come back here. So that you can say format uh, 0 0.78, this is a value. This is a format function, not associated with the string, but format itself. Then it can take two uh, parameter, two parameter, no other parameters, two parameters, value and formats. First parameter is value, second parameter is, is a format. For example, uh, 0 0.78, this is a, a floating point number, right? Um, how do you want to format this number? I want to uh, format it uh, for a percent. So 0 0.78, uh, how many percents? So 0 0.78 means 78%. So this will be For example, here, if I say format and then uh, 0 0.78 comma and percent, then it will return 78%. This is the value 78.0000 percent. At the end, it, it says percent. Uh, this is not really uh, needed right now. So the other way that we, the, the literally same format, 
but this format is a method associated with the string. If you look at, uh, uh, see here, uh, this format is, is a built-in uh, function format. And then this format is associated with the class string. If you go to string, then there is a format. If you see the help statements, two different uh, uh, formats. Well, works similarly. So for example, uh, if you do uh, my, we have a, a format here, right? The dot notation, it starts with a string, which means double quotes. So I have a double quotes here, double quote. And I have a dot notation followed by formats, format. Format is a function, like a method associated with uh, that class, class string. And uh, this is it, uh, and, and there is a uh, format string. Uh, it could have uh, multiple arguments. And there may be some string types of uh, 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 arguments possible, uh, but uh, at this point, you don't need to worry about how you can read this, uh, this all language. Uh, once, once you understand this, then you understand uh, a lot more than that, okay? We have double stars, a one star, and some of the uh, format strings. So we will look at the format strings here. Okay, so this is string. Given string, I'm going to use a format function. So format is associated with that string. If you look at this string, it says my friends, and then, and then there is a curly braces, open and close. One curly brace, another curly brace, another curly brace here, three curly braces, and then close that string. We want to format this. So my friends, something, something, and something. When you format this, this format gives some of the arguments, parameters. If it's here, star means uh, could be any number of uh, uh, parameters, depending upon, depending upon the placeholder here. So this open and close curly brace is nothing but a, another placeholder within string. As I read this, listen carefully uh, how I read this. My friends, something, something, and something. Those are something, some, something will be given by these formats. So if you see here, then something, that's something plugged in. First one plugged in the first, and another something to the second one, and another something. If you do the exact same one here, say my, my friends, for example, If you hit enter, then see what happens. This is a statement. What it returns is this. My friends, John, Sam, and Peter. First one plug in the first, the second one plug in the second, third one plug in the third. Of course, there, there may be some other formats uh, that you can change. For example, uh, you want to put John later here zero, Maybe here uh, two and here one, and if you hit the returns, then it, it goes like this. Peter first. If I don't do any number like this, this number starts from zero. Okay. In this case, 
So because it starts from zero, if I put here two in on this placeholder, then hey, third one comes first, and the second second on second, and then first one the last. Therefore, my friends Peter, Sam, and John in that order. All kinds of such things possible if you uh, look at the formats here. This uh, uh, help uh, library. So we can use that here. So if you want to do that, then you need to have a first, uh, first one plus a second one, something plus something equals to something. That is my string. Like this, something, something plus something equals to something. If I put here space, that space will come like this. If I don't put this space, just to stick together, then it'll come exactly like this. And then we need to do here a format because I have one string here. This is a string. Three placeholder and something that I want to say, plus sign and equal sign. All together, string. They are not evaluated because this is a string. But when we have here format, because of these format functions, they look at this placeholder only and then plug that, plug the value from the format parameter to that placeholder in certain order. So first one that I need to put here A, because this is the first parameter, I need to put the comma. That way I can say, oh, this is the first parameter. Second parameter, what is the second parameter? A plus B, so that is B. Third parameter, really A plus B. Right? And then if I do this, this is exactly the same as this, right? There's formats. Input is, uh, is another type of uh, the built-in functions uh, when you make your code uh, user interactive. So you wanna, you can give a user to, you can, you can provide a, uh, the prompt statements, then user uh, may enter some value in response to your prompt statements. If we say enter your name, then we expect the user to enter uh, your name, uh, enter your age, enter your degree, so on and so forth, right? But uh, in the later, um, you do not uh, trust uh, user uh, input data, right? You do not trust not because uh, you do not trust the user not because the user is bad, but because the user is maybe dummy. Then when you enter, when you say uh, uh, enter your name, then may enter something else, right? So you need to sanitize the values. So all such uh, uh, things uh, needs to be. Uh, enhanced in your coding uh, capabilities. Um, okay, now we need to jump to uh, next module of the slide, which is a data type. So here, yeah, data types in Python. Motivation is this. We know that um, we already understand this, right? Fine. Um, I want to handle John as a name so that I uh, define a variable called the name. So name holds uh, the value John. So far, so good. What if I have 10 values? Then we, need, we may need to create 10 variables. Maybe okay. Name zero, name one, name two, name three, two, name nine. 
What if we have millions? Someone says, yeah, we can do the same, in the same way. Fine. Is there any uh, better way that we could handle? Um, this is a real uh, thing that we did, right? Name one, name two, name three. So if we want to print, uh, then name one, name two, name three, like this. Better way is this. Python developed three types of data types, three, three primitive data types, list, tuple, and dictionary. So list, tuple, and dictionary. If you see a language, then you know but Python, R, Java, C. This is a list in this sequence. And there is a symbol, square brackets. Okay, so they, this value goes into the first element of first space, and this goes to second, this is the third, and this. It should be Python, not Pi. If, if it goes like this, then you need to have Pi. But anyway. And then there's the labels. Uh, we call this index. So index value begins zero. So always first uh, element of this list can be indexed by zero. Second one indexed by one third one indexed by two, and so on and so forth. Similarly, tuples, very much like that. Only difference in this case, this is a parenthesis, symbol difference. Let's forget about this tuple for a moment and go back to here, dictionary. Dictionary typically and explicitly, we see the difference. List is simply, yeah, list of uh, the values at the same level, same kinds. Here I, I would say same kind, okay? Same kind the values are listed. Here, listed and then uh, delimiter a uh, comma. So first element to second element to comma, third element to comma. So we know what is the first and what is the second. Same thing here. In this uh, dictionary, we have uh, comma. Comma is a delimiter. Tuple, also comma. Very typical, right? In, in, uh, in spoken languages, in written languages, also comma, right? If we have a multiple uh, values. Purple, orange, apple, then you need to have that. In this dictionary, also symbols, clearly difference. Curly braces. Those are all different, right? So, uh, syntactic difference by symbols. We understand that. Most syntax difference here is that if it is a dictionary, then we have a colon. What is a dictionary, by the way, in your daily life? Uh, when you look up dictionary, then uh, these days, no dictionaries, but uh, olden days, um, uh, yeah, when you were in elementary school, then uh, why do you need the dictionary? For example, English dictionary. Look, look up the explanation of that term, right? Some word, then you, understand, you need to know what it means, some annotation some explanations. So you have a word and explanation, pair. Dictionary, how can you define a dictionary? You can define a dictionary uh, as the following. Dictionary is nothing but a, a series key and value pairs. 
T is a word, value is okay. all kinds of explanation. For a she and value pair. Check it out. <laughs> My cell phone says, <laughs> this is a Shuri. This, this is a cell phone understands value and key and value pair. All right. Um, so dictionary is nothing but a key and value pairs. Exact the same one here. In this uh, primitive data types in Python, when you say dictionary, dictionary is a key and value pair. Once, as far as you have a key, then you always have that uh, value. That is a key and value pairs. It's not value and key pairs. Is it possible uh, the same values can be uh, uh, paired with the different keys? In other words, is it possible uh, key, the same key can be paired with uh, uh, two different uh, uh, places, two, two, two different uh, annotations? Not a, a, a set of annotations, but two different annotations. If it is a key, then key, literally key means there is only one. It should be unique. So there should be only one key. No, ident no duplications. Anybody that's seen uh, the dictionary uh, where there is a duplicated items of the key and value pair or word, same word appears twice. No, right? In the dictionary, then it's a one word. What word appears one time, which holds multiple different annotations. That that means key. So key is always unique. So for one key, then there is only one annotation. But same annotations may be labeled by two different keys. That's fine, right? Same annotations may be named differently. That is possible in real dictionaries. Same thing here in these dictionaries. But anyway, uh, so here we have a key value in between uh, colon. As far as we say a language, then Python, major, then cyber, job, cybersecurity, engineer, research, then always internet of things. This type of uh, <clears throat> data, so multiple data can be handled, can be uh, held by one variable one variable, dictionary type variable. So one variable holds everything of this. One other variable holds everything of this. In your homework assignments, uh, uh, div uh, dividend, then multiple dividends. If you declare that uh, in a dictionary, then square bracket, open square bracket, and a list of numbers. One, two, three, one comma, two comma, three, four comma, and close square bracket. Then that is a list. And each one of those can be accessed by index. First one can be uh, accessed by zero, second one can be uh, like this. So we know the difference between, clearly, clearly difference between list and dictionary. But well, what about this list and tuple? Can anyone see the difference? Not only the syntactical difference, but the semantics. What it means, but well, right now, difference is this. And tuple, uh, similar to list. Uh, so 
similarity between tuple and list uh, is not the similarity to dictionary. So dictionary is a completely different uh, formats. But tuple and list, they, they, they look very similar. The list of some values. If we say list of some values, but they are the same, right? Semantics, what it means, what it means doesn't, uh, is not really implemented in your coding, but this is extra that I can uh, explain, this semantics. Someone may not understand this uh, fine at this moment, uh, but if you see these uh, things that you, I hope, Hopefully you can find it. Um, this list, all uh, each every uh, values in that list are at the same kind. They are all same kind. If we say uh, this, all the objects in, in the list, they are all same kind, which means they are all uh, the name, human name, right? Same kind. Are they same kind? If you see the value here in the top of one, two, three, professor, cyber, ISP 505. They are not the same kind. What are we going to do with this? If I say they are the, they are the attributes, so having those multiple values, we want to constitute another objects. Multiple values all together constitute another object. There's a tuple. This is all, this describes all together. If we describe by one value, then we don't describe a particular objects, but because we have a multiple, so all together, we constitute a particular person, right? Then that is called tuple. They are not the same kind. List, and they are all in the same kind. They are not the same kind. Each one has its own specific attributes. Therefore, all together can constitute another object. In that case, we use this tuple. Because Gianfranco already uh, mentioned, by nature, this should go all together. So it is not allowed to, ch to change any element of this. So if you want to carry out some uh, collection of, this is a collection of data, this is a collection of data. If we want to send out the collection of data to uh, remotely to somewhere, then or which data type that, that you need to use? List or tuple? You, you need to use tuple, right? That way, no one can modify any one of this. By nature, if it is a tuple, then all the element together constitute one object. This guy, because they are all the same kind, you can element, you can modify this, or you can uh, delete this, all possible. What it meant here, this list has a lot more uh, methods that are associated. Tuple, there are only two methods. List, a lot of methods, okay? So let's practice.
for example, GD, we can hard code to this um, um, as a GM uh, Franco suggested. Uh, for example, three and four and eight, six, whatever that. And then we can say, how can uh, this, this, this is a list. We have four values. Four values in a list. Okay, a list is labeled by variable DD. So this is a variable. This is also a variable. A is a variable. But this, this variable holds value three. This variable holds a list. That list contains multiple values. If you want to access one of those, then you can say DD, as I said, first element can be indexed by zero, second element can be indexed by something and something, right? So you can index it. If you say uh, one, then which value is accessed by this? Four. Four. Because number one means second element in the list. DD is a variable, okay? Um, holds a list if you want to access any specific element in the list then you need to have this dd uh, and open close square bracket uh, inside the index then it'll return it'll it'll be evaluated at that specific uh, value so if you do print dd and that, then it'll be returned, right? Number four here. Um, Pizer, if you want to, if you want to split the first above uh, uh, the code and second code here, then you need to have a, a double uh, pound sign. See, clearly you see the, there is a the line. So if your cursor is in that, that region, rather than above, your cursor is, is in the below. And if you execute it, then it, it executes only that. If you want to uh, handle all, then, then you can highlight all, and then you can just all together, right? This is handy. All right. And if you want to access, for example, hey, I want to. I want to uh, extract together four and eight. If you have index, then if I want to exact, uh, if you want to get uh, two values, then should I do two times? No, you don't need to, right? You can simply put here colon. So there is a range from the index one to index what? Four and eight, Y three. Here, range from colon exclusive. Here, the last index. It goes up to last index, but last index itself exclusive. So one, two, three, four, five, but when you count this, one, two, up to three, but three exclusive. So only one and two, two values that came out. Okay, this DD, if you see here, help and list, oops, 
list. Then, then we have uh, methods, sort, reverse, remove, pop. Those are the, uh, the methods. Those methods can be associated with uh, uh, the uh, list uh, variable. So insert, index, extend, count, clear, append. All right, so, so I want to uh, quit this. And then here, if I do append and then um, nine nine, then it, then then it can be appended. I want to do this uh, here. It's all together. It's much better. So what is the DD right now? Then because I append the 99, so I have a three, four, three, four, eight, six, and 99, right? This is a three, four, eight, six, hard coded initially, so, so that. Initially, if, if you put here, for example, CC equals uh, close and uh, that, and what is the CC? Then that is empty, right? CC and append. And uh, for example, seven seven, then CC contains a seventy seven, right? So currently, DD <clears throat> has that. Um, I can do append, uh, for example, another list, okay, five and seven, and enter. So what is a DD? If I up append it, uh, five and seven, then because I appended the list, so I have that. What if I do DD and append five comma seven? It is not possible. According to uh, the library, it takes only one uh, parameter. If I enter by having comma two parameters. If it's not allowed, it's not, if it is not allowed, it is not, it is not allowed, which means that error, right? So don't do that. You need to have only one parameter. If we want to enter two uh, values, then you need to put them in uh, a list. Then you can get in like this. But someone may think, oh, I don't want to put them in. Uh, here we have a list. So we have a outer list. But we have on a, another list inside, inside itself another list, right? This is one single element. This second element is a single, third, fourth, fifth, that's all single element. But sixth element here is a list. What that means is that if I want to get sixth element, index six, then it will return zero, one, two, three, four. Oh, that should be five. Yeah, six, so therefore, therefore it should be five. So if I do five, then it will return five and seven, right? This is a sixth element. Then, Is there any way that I can, although I have a multiple, I want to enter them all in the same level like this, not all together as a single bundle, but separately. Then you need to use another method called extend. Extend, and then you can put, say, 88, 12, and 14, okay? And then if you do DD, then this 88, 12, 14, three values in a list, because this extend uh, requires only one single parameter, but 
difference between extend and append. Append, then, then it appends as is. Extend, you unboxing, <laughs> and then append. All right? We know this, DD5. Is there any way that I can access seven? Where is the seven? How can I access the seven? Not five and seven together, but seven only. We need to get the second one. So right there, I can say second one, number one. Then it'll return seven. This is nothing but this. If this is a given, then we know how to access the seven. We simply put the second one, index one. So to this, I can say index one. There is another uh, method called the insert. If we want to insert, for example, hey, I want to have uh, uh, in the sec right now, first one is three, second one is four. I want to make second element to five. I want to insert five into in between three and four. So I want to insert five. But when I do this, you see there's a, uh, annotations. It says in uh, insert. First, first parameter should be index. Second parameter on objects. I already put the object five. Five is an object that I want to insert. But I didn't do in uh, index, so I need to do put put here index. So what is it, what what is an index that we, that I need to use? Zero, one, two, three. I want to put it in the second element. Bingo. Now my question. I want to put the uh, six here in between five and seven in this uh, you know, list, nested, nested list, nested list, nested list. It's called, okay, nested list. I'm not saying this is a nest, nested list, but this is a nested list. In this nested list, I wanna, I wanna insert six at the end. Okay, that says six, six at the end. So it'll be five, seven, and six. How can you make this five, seven, and five, seven, and six? Hint, first you need to locate this as we did like this. You need to locate this first up to this. Uh, by the way, six, because we inserted one more. Same as about, yes, nothing but, yeah, five. And there we can say insert. And then one, two, yeah, this should be two and six, right? So if we do DD, then it'll be, okay. Go back to help again and topple. If you see tuple here, we have only these two methods, count and index, count and index, which is quite different from the case of a list. List has multiple different methods. We didn't use all the methods. We practiced insert, append, extend, uh, all those things, right? Uh, by the way, if you have a DD, then we see how many how many uh, elements here? How many elements at the top level? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all together, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have 10 elements in the list DD, right? Can you get that? Uh, there is a, uh, 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 a built-in function called the len, length, len for length, then you can get the number 10, okay?
someone may think, oh, no matter what uh, the level of nestness, nestedness, this is a nested, right? Another nested, deeper level of nested uh, ones. Can we count all the numbers there? Forget about the, uh, the levels, different yeah, yeah, types of levels, but uh, can you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, things like that. We're not going to do that today, okay? Uh, this is a given. But there is no built-in function to do that. If you want to do that, you need to code it, right? Go back to tuple. Tuple does not have all things, right? But tuple and length, tuple and list, tuple and list, they look the same, right? You can convert to this uh This, this DD is a list. You can convert to DD to tuple. There's a function called the tuple. Then see here, there is a tuple. Parenthesis. Okay, this is not converted. If you want to convert this, then you need to locate this first and then uh, convert it. If we want to convert to this and 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 assign that to a new variable, then you need to do dd, couple, you name it, uh, and do that. Then, then if you do dd, couple, then that is that. And if you do dd, then then original dd. So original dd, that, that is a list, as you can see this. If you convert to this, then you can have this, right? This DD tuple, what is the what is the type of that DD tuple? No, no. Type 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 is another uh, function that you can check. What is the type of uh, DD itself? It says uh, DD is a list. Type DD tuple. This guy says, "Oh, that is a tuple." because it converted to tuple. If it's a DD tuple, dot append 100, there's an error, right? Why? Tuple. Tuple type does not have the methods append. Only you can do append when the type is in a list. In other words, originally you have a tuple and list, list different list. And now some at some points you wanna you wanna you wanna handle some of the element in the tuple. What should you do? Tuple, there is no methods that you can manipulate any of those things. What do you need to do? If you if a tuple is given, but you have to manipulate, but tuple itself does not uh, provide any uh, such uh, methods. You need to convert to tuple to list because you convert to list to, to tuple, then you can convert tuple to list. So either here list dd list equals list and dd tuple. List is another function that generate a list of this parameter. Very similar to here, tuple. Tuple generates dd to tuple, right? List generate dd tuple to list. So outcome of this will be DD list. So I convert that and, and then I name it a DD list. If I see type DD list, then it is a list again, right? This is a list. If you have a tuple, 
But if you want to manipulate it, then you can convert that to tuple. Can be back and back and forth. Okay. But back to the original definition. They look similar, but difference is in semantics. If we want to constitute an object using each element's attributes together, then you can use tuple. You can create as a tuple. If all the elements are the same kind, then you can use 